In turning your vehicle, you should look in your mirrors to make sure that the rear of your trailer will not hit anything. As a commercial driver regarding your cargo, what are you responsible for? You're responsible for inspecting your cargo and knowing that it's securely tied down. If the cargo contains hazardous materials, you must check to see if placards are required. What's the problem with mirrors? There are blind spots your mirrors can't show you. What's the minimum amount of tread depth your tires should have? 4 30 seconds of an inch on the front wheels and 2 30 seconds of an inch on all other wheels. A pre-trip inspection should be performed before each trip. When driving downhill in a vehicle equipped with an automatic transmission, you should select a low range for greater engine braking. What are some things to do if you are being tailgated? Avoid quick changes of speed or direction. To be sure you know what's happening on the highway in front of you, don't focus too long on the mirrors. Exhaust system parts shouldn't touch or rub against fuel system parts, tires, or other moving parts of the vehicle. How do you test hydraulic brakes for their stopping action? Go about five miles per hour and then push the brake pedal firmly. When using your turn signals, what's a good practice to follow? If you don't have self-canceling turn signals, don't forget to turn them off after using them. When traction is poor because of rain or snow, how would you increase your vehicle speed? Very gradually. Where do you place the three reflector triangles on a divided highway? Place them all to the rear, at 10 feet, at 100 feet, and at 200 feet. How often should you inspect your cargo? After every break during the trip. When driving over 40 miles per hour, how much space should you keep in front of you? At least one second for 10 feet of your vehicle length plus one second. What is a vehicle condition report? A list of problems which you have found with the vehicle. What should you do if your vehicle starts to hydroplane? Release the accelerator and push in the clutch. What can happen if you don't have enough weight on the steering axle? Underloaded front axles caused by shifting weight too far to the rear can make the steering axle weight too light to steer safely. 
Before starting down a hill, to be sure that you are in the proper gear, you should downshift before starting down the hill. How does tire pressure affect hydroplaning? Hydroplaning is more likely to occur when tire pressure is low. When should you help out other drivers by signaling that it's safe to pass? Never. That's not your job. Never signal another driver to let him know it's safe to pass. What's probably your best driving speed? Traffic is moving at 35 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. 35 miles per hour. Turned on brake retarders apply their power when you let up all the way on the accelerator pedal. What's the minimum number of tie downs you should have? You should have at least two tie downs. Should you turn off brake retarders when the road is wet or covered with snow? Yes, brake retarders could cause a skid. Slight melting will make ice wet. What is more slippery? Wet ice. At dawn or dusk or in rain or snow, when it's difficult for other drivers to see you, you should consider turning on your low beam headlights. Since air pressure increases with temperature increases, you should leave the tire pressure alone since the air pressure will decrease when the tires cool off. Speed limits posted at freeway off-ramps may not be safe speeds for larger vehicles or heavily loaded vehicles. With the vehicle stopped, how do you test hydraulic brakes for a leak? Pump the brake pedal three times, then apply firm pressure, and then hold for five seconds. When merging with traffic, you should look in your mirrors to make sure the gap in the traffic is large enough for your vehicle to enter. What are some steering system defects to look for? Missing nuts, bolts, cotter keys, or other parts. The amount of space needed to cross or enter traffic is affected by the weight of the load. Antifreeze is effective for hot conditions as well as cold. How many times more distance does it take to stop a vehicle when the speed is doubled? four times as much. It takes four times more distance to stop the vehicle when the speed is doubled. What are two factors for knowing when to shift? Using engine speed and road speed. If you have to stop your vehicle in the road to load cargo or passengers, you should flash your brake lights to warn drivers behind you.
Why do empty trucks usually require greater stopping distances? Empty trucks can bounce and lock their wheels. What's the only way to stop a front wheel skid? Let the vehicle slow down, stop turning, and stop braking so hard. What's important about the center of gravity for a load? A high center of gravity means your vehicle is more likely to tip over. Is there a requirement to show the vehicle's logbook to an officer requesting to look at it? Yes, there is an absolute requirement for that. Before putting the tire chains on the vehicle, you should check to be sure that the chains have no broken hooks, cross links, bent, or broken side chains. If you think a tire has blown out, what should you do to stop your vehicle? Hold the steering wheel firmly and don't apply the brakes until the vehicle has slowed down. What is black ice? Black ice is a thin layer of ice clear enough that you can see the road beneath it, making the road appear wet. As soon as you see your trailer getting off the proper backing path, you should turn the top of the steering wheel in the direction of the drift. What should you do if your vehicle starts to hydroplane? Release the accelerator and push in the clutch. To keep your vehicle from rolling back when you start up, you should partly engage the clutch before you take your right foot off of the brake. Why should you know what traffic is doing on all sides? You need to know you will have room to change lanes or to stop. What's controlled braking? Controlled braking is applying the brakes as hard as you can without locking the wheels. Whenever you're about to pass a vehicle, a pedestrian, or a cyclist, you should assume that they haven't seen you. Convex mirrors show a wider area than flat mirrors, but they also make everything seem farther away than it really is. What are three factors of total stopping distance with hydraulic brakes? Perception, reaction, and braking distance. When backing a trailer, you can make corrections to reposition your vehicle by pull-ups. Empty buses don't require more stopping distance than loaded buses because... They usually have as much braking power when empty as when loaded.
Where do you place the three reflector triangles on a two-lane road? At 10 feet and 100 feet of the rear and 100 feet from the front of the vehicle. When should you use your high beam headlights? Whenever you can, providing the law allows it. In holding the steering wheel, what's the proper way to place your hands? Firmly, with your hands on opposite sides of the wheel. If you have to set out reflective warning triangles by the highway, you should hold them between yourself and oncoming traffic. What are some things to do when you are backing your vehicle? Look at your path. Back slowly. Back straight back. What are some defects to look for in the suspension system? Spring hangers that are cracked or broken. When should you downshift for a curve? You should downshift before entering the curve. Besides looking for vehicles coming into your lane, what else does looking for traffic mean? It also means watching for brake lights of slowing vehicles ahead of you. What's the purpose of cargo blocking and bracing? To keep cargo from sliding, falling, and getting out of balance. When you need to slow down, you may want to warn drivers behind you by lightly tapping on the brake pedal to flash the brake lights. When backing a trailer, you should turn your steering wheel opposite the direction you want to go. What's the major cause of most serious skids? Driving too fast for road conditions. Where should you aim when fighting a fire with a fire extinguisher? Aim at the base of the fire. When checking tires, what are some problems you should look for? Bad wear, cuts, or other damage, tread separation, cracked valve stems. How do you know you have the engine speed and road speed to shift gears? You will know by listening to the sound the engine makes. When using a helper to back a vehicle, your helper should agree with you 
on the hand signal for stop and the helper should stand where you can see him at all times. Wheels or rims that have been repaired by welding are unsafe. What are some items to check, especially before driving in winter weather? Check the coolant antifreeze level and the windshield washer antifreeze level. Besides watching traffic behind, what else should you use your rear view mirrors to watch out for? Watch out for possible tire fires. With respect to braking, what's advisable when pulling off the road? Try to avoid using your brakes until your speed has dropped to about 20 miles per hour. When driving, do you always want to be staring off into the distance ahead? No, you should be shifting your attention back and forth, near and far. At night, where should you look to avoid the glare of headlights from oncoming traffic? Look at the right side of the road and watch the sidelines. Why can't you assume your vehicle will clear the heights posted at overpasses? Because some roads can cause your vehicle to tilt. How long does it take to stop a heavy vehicle going 55 miles per hour on a dry, level road. About the length of a football field, or about 6 seconds. You want to turn right, and you must swing wide. So, you should turn wide as you complete the turn. Some newer vehicles have progressive shifting. What does that mean? The RPMs at which you shift become higher as you move up in the gears. What could rust around the wheel nuts mean? The wheel nuts could be loose. If a vehicle coming towards you has its high beams on, you should keep your lights on low beam and look off to the right. What's true about downshifting before you reach a long downhill grade? Downshifting helps prevent the brakes from overheating and losing braking power. Whether backing a straight truck or a combination vehicle, you should back and turn towards the driver's side. How often should you check your tires when driving in very hot weather. You should check your tires every two hours or every 100 miles. Because of the size of your vehicle, 
You may wish to flash your brake lights to alert drivers behind you of hazards that are ahead of you. What should you be able to do with your vehicle when driving at night? You should be able to stop within the range of your headlights. Downshifting requires knowing when to shift. To do this correctly, you should use either the tachometer or speedometer. While executing a quick turn, what's a good point to remember? Don't apply the brakes while turning. How do you lessen the chances of making sudden moves to avoid hazards? Watch far enough ahead so hazards can be anticipated. Roads usually become more slippery when the temperature rises to the melting point of ice. Before driving, what should you do if you start to feel drowsy? Get some sleep. To make a tight turn with a large vehicle, you may have to drive slower than many automobile drivers might expect. With a pressurized cooling system, you should not remove the radiator cap until the system has cooled down. What's the danger when traveling alongside other vehicles? You may be trapped in your lane when you need to change lanes. How far ahead should you look while driving? You should look 12 to 15 seconds ahead. If you are turning left, which lane should you use of the two left turn lanes? Of the two left turn lanes, use the one on the right or the outside turn lane. What can happen if you have too much weight on the steering axle? Too much weight on the steering axle can cause hard steering and can damage the steering axle and tires.